Hey folks, welcome back to my CNC build series. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the Z-axis assembly for the machine. So all these parts you see in front of you make up the body for the for the Z-axis. Um, and yeah, they're, they're pretty much ready to be assembled, except for there's a little bit of work I have to do first, and that is mainly in this piece. So you saw I made this in the last video. I put these holes in it, which are what attach to the x-axis. Um, then your rail moves side to side, and they're not good. <laughs> I made some big mistakes in, in the alignment of those holes. I don't even know, I'm not sure if you can see it. You might be able to see it, but they're not good. <laughs> so I'm gonna fix them. I'm basically just gonna do the whole pattern on the far side. But also I need to do a little bit of more metal work on this. So I have to do those holes, just fix it up so that it's better for mounting onto the x-axis. And then also I need to drill some holes for uh, this little linear rail, which will sit uh, somewhere like that on the middle. So I just need to drill and tap the holes into that. So that's the first part that I'm gonna do. I'm going to do the metal work I need to do on that, and then I'm gonna bring it back in, and I'm going to uh, fully assemble the Z-axis, and I'll let you guys watch that. Then I'm gonna mount the Z-axis onto the X-axis, and then technically we should have a three-axis CNC machine. Okay, I did a bad thing. I uh, meant to meant to film assembling the Z-axis and uh, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, but it's here. Anyway, this is the Z-axis and we have it uh, mounted back onto the X-axis again. So that still moves nice and freely. And if I move the coupler, you can see we have our Z-axis moving up and down. And that, it actually, it moves pretty smooth. There's a couple of little parts where it's maybe not quite as smooth, but also I don't have any um, lubricant to this, no grease here, no oil on the rail or anything like that. So that could be contributing to that. But all in all, it feels pretty smooth. I think the alignments are all pr pretty good. Um, I do have a small amount of, I can, I can tweak things in here to try and, um, uh, fix up the alignments, but uh, it's there and it works. I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to wire it in. I'm going to do some of the um, sort of the configuration that I have to do. I need to set the um, steps per millimeter for the x-axis and then, or for the z-axis even. Um, and once that's done, I'm going to hopefully um, use it to do. I'm going to do a nice, little nice, you know, pen plotting drawing. Um, but I'll be able to lift my pen up this time. So we've progressed from etch sketch drawing. Um, I also need to design the new pen holder, which is gonna mount onto the, the block here, which is obviously the main part that uh, moves up and down. Uh, so I'm gonna go off, do that, do my wiring, do some config, and then hopefully be able to show you guys um, some nice pretty pictures being drawn with the pen being lifted up.
All right, the y-axis or z-axis. One of these days I'll, I'll get the axis name right on the first try. The z-axis is now all wired up, um, set up uh, on the controller, and all of the uh, all of the, the current requirements have been set and everything. Um, you might have seen I had to do some real jank to get this to work. So strangely enough, this little motor, which is very hot, <laughs> uh, I'm probably running that at a little bit too much uh, current there. Uh, that little motor is... Can you the motor hot? No, that guy's really hot though. I need to turn that current down, I think. Um, basically, the, the wiring, it's not like the other ones that have little JST connectors on them. It's actually wired into it. Uh, and unfortunately, the cable isn't long enough to reach down to my controller board and have enough travel. So I had to. Uh, I also <laughs> tried to do this by um, making like a new cable with some JST connectors. Turns out my crimping tool won't work. It's not the right kind. So I kind of couldn't do that. So I've <laughs> made this really janky little uh, extension cable, which is only temporary. I have uh, the right crimping tool on order now, so I'll be able to fix that up uh, later on. But for now, this this works just to let me, I basically just want to configure the axis to get the steps um, per millimeter and stuff set. Um, and I can move it, um, but it doesn't sound the best. It's a little crunchy. I mean, actually, that sounds a bit better than it did. Yeah, it's still it's a little crunchy. It's not super smooth. But then yeah, there's no um, there's no lubrication on any of this yet. So I have to add some grease and uh, onto the lead screw, and I'll probably uh, lubricate that as well. But now we have a machine that can move in three axes, which is really great. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm. Yeah, happy with that. I need to. Yeah, I need to. That's, that's that is way too hot. Uh, I need to turn the current down on that. But um, yeah, uh, that's 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 some good some good progress there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cover all this back up. I might do a little bit of tidying on some wiring. I'm gonna <laughs> bump the current down for that so that it's not um, burning me anymore uh, and melting the uh, PLA bracket that it's mounted on. Um, and after that, I'm probably going to design a little uh, pen holder that's going to screw onto here. And then I'm going to draw a picture that isn't like an Etch-a-Sketch. Uh, that'll be nice. Um, okay, so that's, that's all coming up next. I've done a bit of work now configuring everything up for the Z axis to uh, make it move accurately up and down the right amounts per steps. Um, I've also got I did a bit of stuff on tidying up some wiring, so I put in some chunking and stuff to uh, just to neaten up the cables and stuff to make sure the machine could move um, a little bit more freely. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run a test uh, on a pretty basic model that I spun up uh, in FreeCAD using the built-in cam tools to generate just, it's basically an engraving tool path that you'd use if you had a, an engraving bit to cut into some material, but I've set it up so that it engraves to a depth of zero um, millimeters and I've basically set the zero of my machine to be the tip of the pen right down here. So like none of this is, it's not really ideal way of doing it. Um, I need to figure out like a really good tool chain for doing this stuff. But it does have the advantage that I already know how to use all those tools. <laughs> I already know how to use FreeCAD and the CAM tool that came with it is pretty simple. So the modeling and drafting part of it was easy. And then all I had to do was just figure out a little bit on the um, on the cam stuff, which again, I don't really know how any of it works properly. There's so many settings in there that I have absolutely no idea what they do. But um, I've managed, I think, to put together the right settings so that I'm able to do uh, make this draw and I can make it lift the pen up so that it doesn't draw like an etch sketch <laughs> which is all it was able to do up to now. Um, so I'm going to run the test code here. Uh, it's going to draw a few shapes and some letters. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll see how how that looks. Um, yeah, okay, let's click run, see what happens. Hmm, seems to be something wrong with my G code, so I'm gonna have to come back and <laughs> do this again. Okay, we're back. Let's uh, <laughs> see what happens. I think I fixed it.
Okay, so that worked pretty well. Can't call it a complete success because we have these some of these these strange patches here. Um, I think what this is to do with I think it's that this is there's like a low spot here on the surface, so the pen wasn't contacting the paper properly. Um, but the rest of it, the, the machine seems to do <laughs> exactly what it's been told to do, which is which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the accuracy, especially on these smaller features like the inside bit of the E here. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's a pretty successful test. I'm I'm, I'm really happy with how that went. Um, so I think that's that's probably it for now. Um, the next thing I have to do is I have to figure out the um, auto uh, homing features and the the limits and all that sort of stuff. So at the moment I had to like basically zero this myself just by positioning it manually, then turning the machine on and uh, and getting it to run with this as its zero point. So this original drawing, which was drawn for an A4 sheet of paper, was actually meant to be more over and down, but I set my zero point here, so you know it offsets a little bit. So. I want to set up that um, that the zeroing and auto homing with limit switch and stuff. So I'm going to wire that up. Um, that's going to be the next thing I'm going to figure out. I'm going to wire all that up, still using the pen, as I think I said before, just for safety, so I'm not, you know, messing around with a spinning spindle while I still don't have the machine um, moving exactly the way I want it to move. Then I'm going to get myself a spindle for this thing and uh, try and cut some stuff, which is exciting and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> So as always, if you like this video, um, don't forget to don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, um, and if you'd like to help support the work that I'm doing, you can find a link in the description to my Patreon. Um, all the money that I get there will go towards making bigger and better projects in the future. Thanks for watching, guys.